Hello Internet! Welcome to Games That Time Forgot. It's October here, and this time around we're looking at Velvet Assassin, put out in 2008 by South Peak Games and Replay Studios. Running you very quickly through the plot, you play Violet Summer, a British agent sent into mainland Europe at the height of World War II. The game is mostly told in a framing structure of Violet in the hospital, recounting her memories that brought her to that point. The last two levels taking place in the hospital itself, and her escape from there to the surrounding town. Beyond that, it's actually a very minimalist game, seeming to take its lead from the Nietzschean axiom of battle not with monsters lest ye become a monster, and when you gaze into the abyss, the abyss gazes into you. And that's it. That's seriously it. We spent like, what, 20 seconds covering the entire plot? But then again, that kind of becomes the point of the game. There's no real tale of revenge. There's no nemesis waiting for you at the end of the game. Even the introductory mission briefings are pinpoint and to the letter. You're going to X to kill Y or to stop Z, forcing you to reflect solely on the actions of the character and you playing it. And the game does railroad you in your choices. It's kind of ingenious in that way. Complementing the storytelling is the color palette. Browns and tans, blacks and grays. The only real splashes of color that stand out are the blood spatters and Violet's quote-unquote hospital gown. Where is that a hospital gown? And for the love of God, please tell me it is not a unisex gown. The last bit I want to touch on is the actual action in the game. The gunplay is atrocious. It's terrible. Once you get used to it, it's acceptable. That's as good as it gets, though. For the most part, in order to take out the Nazi enemies, you're going to have to melee them, which means sneaking up and stabbing the crap out of them or possibly trying to fend them off desperately because for some reason they forget the fact that guns are ranged weapons and could easily shoot you from closer than three feet away. This means in order to progress in the game, you have to become a hunter. You have to learn to use the environment to your advantage. And in this way, it takes that chilling turn. The game experience is a nightmare, but I mean that in the most complimentary way. It gets the point across. In her fighting of the Nazi war machine, in her battling with monsters, Violet has become a monster an other. Something lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce and slay. Or is she? The opiate morphine is used in the game, not only as a plot point, but as a way to slow down time, allowing you to kill people head-on, as opposed to being machine-gunned to death. But also, it's done up in a way that makes you appear beatific, beautiful. The world is suddenly full of light, casting off the drab grays, browns, blacks, and everything else, and with blossoms of blood falling like ash. What this also does is call into question the memories that Violet is showing the player, and that the player is interacting with. Was she actually able to get through this? Did she have help? All these things suddenly come into question, as does her mental state. Is she actually deteriorating? Is she a junkie? Did any of this actually happen? We finally have an unreliable narrator in a video game. And it's awesome! As much as I wish there was more story for the unreliable narrator to unreliably narrate, I'm kind of glad there isn't. It may have ruined the whole ambiance of the game, the looming terror that you have to hide in the shadows while being pursued, or just from being found and triggering the pursuit that inevitably ends with a fade to gray and death. It's kind of like Dark Souls Light, only instead of it being the undead you have to worry about, it's Nazis. But let's talk for a second about this, because one of the most challenging aspects of the game is the fact that you're essentially playing a human version of Pyramid Head, murdering Nazis. Now, as we've said in previous reviews, I'm okay with that. It's a video game. And plus, Nazis are evil. We can all agree on this. But while doing research into this game, I also saw that The Reader, the movie with Kate Winslet, came out in 2008. A film that speculates that maybe being illiterate is somehow worse than burning 300 women alive inside of a church. This especially came home to me at the end of the game, which involves innocent civilians being burned alive in a church, and one of the achievements being for 300 stealth kills. There's a weird commentary going on here. Not so much on the side of Nazi Germany, but more so about war in general and what it does to you. That murdering someone actually does warp your soul. Violet becomes a monster. She readily admits to this in the opening monologue. And through the game, you become culpable in that. You're playing a serial killer, who granted, is killing terrible people. But you're still killing them. It's a game that actually challenges you to play it. It's disturbing, but it was disturbing in all the right ways. It makes you question why you're playing a video game and what the ramifications of that are. Spec Ops The Line would do this later on in 2012, releasing a game that is phenomenal. Velvet Assassin is sleek and stylish, and is more of a haiku 
to Spec Ops The Line's novel. But the game is clearly not a fan of the Nazis either. I mean, once you get to the Warsaw Ghetto, they don't pull any punches. There are bodies hanging from trees. There are very clearly families that have been gunned down and left there to rot. And there's also my favorite moment of peekaboo! It's a dead child! That just is jarring. It makes you question the games you've played up to this point. Granted, it's frustrating as all get out, and you have to work at it to get its meaning. But then again, I can't shy away from that. I really loved it. I really think that in its intention and its goals, this game is a work of art. In pulling it off, however, I have to admit, the gun mechanics drove me insane. Which is kind of comical given the content of this game. Eventually I got used to it, but it was a lot of trial and error and a lot, a lot, so many death screens. I died less in a playthrough of Dark Souls than I did in the playthrough of this. Now that might be more of a commentary on my ability to play games, but still it did factor into the overall score. What is that overall score you ask? I am giving this 7 stilettos out of a possible 10. I do recommend this game, especially if you're willing to question your experience. In that instance, I would give it 8. I would give it an extra one and just say, go for it. I had a ball playing it, even though it made me want to tear out my rapidly diminishing amount of hair. Well, anyway, that's it for Games That Time Forgot. Uh, and this finishes up our World War II trilogy, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. We'll be doing a wrap-up video before we begin our first-person shooter trek. And we're starting off with... You've got to be kidding me. We're not done with the 1940s yet, folks. I still don't have a catchphrase. This is October. Have a great night. The gun mechanics drove me in flipping sane. Hey, caught that one. Way to go, guys.